On today's Prophecy in the News, we're going to talk about our new president, Barack Hussein Obama. The title of a title article or the cover story for our December 2008 magazine, President-elect Barack Obama is related to President Bush. Tenth cousin linked by Samuel Hinckley in 1662. It's going to be an interesting program. And I must have you to understand that right at the outset that we do not have a political agenda, only a biblical agenda looking for the fulfillment of biblical prophecies. Gary Stearman is here to discuss with me Barack Obama. The new president, Barack Obama, JR, when he is inaugurated in January, everyone is saying there's going to be a great change taking place. They're all, of course, he ran on uh, that uh, idea, change. Uh, we need to change things. Well, uh, we are observing the changes taking place right now. Uh, one of the changes that interests me, and I know interests you, is the spiritual component of this new administration. Mm -hmm. It has a very strong spiritual overtone. Uh, a lot of people yes. are saying that perhaps Barack Obama is more of a spiritual man than he is a politician. Now, I want to say that um, we rejoice over the idea that color is no longer a factor yes. in America. And um, we rejoice because America did some shameful things back in ages past. And, and this stigma is finally um, uh, off, off the table. And this, this the old spiritual song, We Shall Overcome, has been realized at last. And I'm glad of that. In fact, when Barack Obama was, uh, was elected, I said, well, at least finally we have a president who's not related to European royalty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> you said that. But that's before I found out that he was kin to President Bush. They are tenth cousins linked by Samuel Hinckley. We'll get to that in just a moment. Oprah Winfrey said... Uh, upon the election of Barack Obama, I've sort of been like pulsating all day, and now I feel like I'm like in full vibrational mode. I like that. <laughs> and Jr., that again, that's that spiritual component we're talking about. And yes. again, we're not talking here about color. We're not, but we're beginning, I think, to see something that we haven't seen maybe in our lifetimes in in the presidency. Here's a statement from Simon Rosenberg, president of the New Democratic Network. Quote, I don't think we're going to see the restoration of an old political age. We're ushering, but the ushering in of a new age, they're going to rewrite the rules. He's talking about wow. a kind of a, uh, a general over tone, uh, mm -hmm. a, a new general idea. I'm groping for words here. And cousin new... President Bush is wanting to jump the gun and go ahead and get it started because he said to the G20 that he would be willing for America's financial system to be under the uh, auspices or the oversight of an international group. Isn't that mm -hmm. amazing? We've lost our sovereignty, Gary. We have lost our sovereignty, and we are moving into an era in which the affect, that is the emotions, are as important as the mind. Uh, here is uh, a, a quote from a man named Russell Simons, founder of a hip hop music record company. Quote, Obama's election as president is a beautiful testament to the American collective consciousness that's flowering. This more loving consciousness will be necessary to protect us from some of our hurtful human choices and tendencies. End quote. Uh, J.R., when I see that term collective consciousness, yes. that's an old New Age term. Yeah, well, so we've got two people here quoted uh, in uh, news sources, and they are talking about the New Age movement. They are. And the what, new are you, age. what are you talking about when you're talking about the New Age movement? You're talking about spirituality. Now, I use that term as opposed to Christianity. Now, Christianity is a, a spiritual movement, of course, but when the world talks about spirituality, it doesn't necessarily mean Christianity. It means a spiritual consciousness. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, here at Prophecy in the News, for the past 20 years, we've talked about the New Age movement and all of their occult overtones. Yeah. Uh, but here's a, 
Here's a Republican, Kimberly Ashley, who said, it's not a typical answer, but I believe he has a higher consciousness. I think he's more spiritually awakened and that he'll make different choices based on that and not on external forces. So it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out, isn't it? It is, and on a rather dark note, uh, uh, several have referred to him in using the term messi messianic or messiah. Mm -hmm. uh, some have actually dubbed him the new messiah. Now, to me, yes. JR, that, that's a little bothersome. Yeah, well, I saw Louis Farrakhan, who is the leader of the Black Muslims Nation of Islam, called Barack Obama the Messiah. He said, quote, you are the instrument that God is going to use to bring about universal change. And that is why Barack has captured the youth. And he has involved young people in a political process that they didn't care anything about at the time. That's a sign, he said, quote, when the Messiah speaks, the youth will hear. And the Messiah is absolutely here. That's that's Louis Farrakhan, a quote. Black Muslims, yes. Amazing. Ted Howard, a 64-year-old African-American, said it's more spiritual than political. And Daniel Clark, uh, 41 years old, described Obama's win as magical. He said it's like a spiritual cleansing. So here's all this spiritual overtones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but listen to what Jesse Jackson Jr. said. Now, Jesse Jackson Jr., is the Democratic uh, member of the House of Representatives representing Illinois' second congressional district, which includes South Chicago. And uh, this, of course, is, you know, where all this has taken place. Mm -hmm. So here Jesse Jackson, Jr., son of Jesse Jackson, the Reverend, said, quote, I cried all night. I'm going to be crying for the next four years. What Barack Obama has accomplished in the, is the single most extraordinary event that has occurred in the 232 years of the nation's political history. I agree with that. However, he went on to say, the event itself is so extraordinary that another chapter could be added to the Bible to chronicle its significance. What? Another chapter added to the Bible? I don't think so. <laughs> J.R., my Isn't question amazing? is, where, where would you put it? <laughs> I mean, uh, would you probably put it chapter after twenty three Re of Revelation? <laughs> now you know. <laughs> Maybe so. I don't know. The chapter twenty two says, "Don't you touch this book." <laughs> he <laughs> said, "Don't you add or take from it, or I'll add the curses to you." That's what God says, and but I think maybe He meant by this that the Messiah has finally arrived, and the Book of Revelation has been fulfilled. Now. When we talk in these terms, J.R., I can't help but think that we're, we're living in biblical times, if you will. We're living at the, at the turn of an age. And I go all the way back to the beginning of Daniel chapter 11, and uh, where, where Daniel uh, prophesied a mighty king, D Daniel 11, 3, shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion, do according to his will. Well, that mighty king was Alexander the Great. And remember the story of Alexander he was not just a warrior. He was beloved of his people, but J.R., he was also thought to be a man of great spiritual uh, or spirituality. Uh, they followed him almost as a, uh, a spiritual leader, as much as a warrior. Gary, Alexander the Great's mother told him that Philip of Macedon was not his father, that his father was Zeus. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> How about that? Zeus. Well, I want you to know that um, Barack Obama is related to President George Bush. Barack Obama and President Bush are the our tenth cousins, once removed by Samuel Hinckley of Cape Cod, who died in 1662. Hinckley, Hinckley, where have I heard mm -hmm. that name? Track the genealogy of uh, Mr. Hinckley, and yeah. you come up with a very interesting story. And by the way, in his article, J.R. has done just that. Yep, got pictures and all. John W. Hinckley, the would-be assassin of President Ronald Reagan. Um, we knew at the time, and we were told at the time, that the Hinckley family were supporters of George H.W. Bush in his run for the presidency, and that uh, Scott Bush... I'm sorry, Scott Hinckley was due to have supper at the home of Neil Bush the next night. Of course, all that was canceled when his brother shot President Ronald Reagan. Now we learn that they may be more than just friends. They could be cousins, the Hinckley family, both, kin both to Obama and to George Bush. They go back 10 generations to Samuel 
Hinckley. Now, Obama's distant presidential cousins include President George Bush and his father George H.W. Bush, Gerald Ford, Lyndon Johnson, Harry S. Truman, and James Madison. All this has been published by the New England Historical Genealogical Society. Uh, they are the oldest uh, genealogical society in America, founded in 1845, and they said, quote, it is a fact that Barack Obama, the son of a white woman from Kansas and a black man from Kenya, is related to several presidents across both party lines. Furthermore, he's related to other politicians. Believe it or not, he's related to Dick Cheney. British Prime Minister Sir Winston Churchill and Civil War General Robert E. Lee. Mm. Uh, Lynn Cheney announced her discovery while discussing her new book, Blue Skies, No Fences, on in MSNBC. When asked if she would support Hillary Rodden Clinton beca because she is a woman, Lynn Cheney said, quote, I have to admit a certain bias here. Dick and Barack Obama are eighth cousins. Mrs. Cheney said that it was an amazing American story that one ancestor could be responsible down the family line for lives that have taken such different and varied paths. Fascinating, mm. isn't it? It is fascinating. <laughs> and why are we following genealogies? Well, biblically, uh, if you've read the Bible, <laughs> J.R., you know you come to those pesky genealogies. So-and-so begot so-and-so begot yes. so-and-so. And you go to the New Testament, the book of Matthew, so-and-so begot so-and-so. You go to the book of Luke. Uh, the Bible finds genealogies to be very important. And Daniel has a long genealogy from Alexander the Great down through the mm -hmm. Ptolemies and the Seleucids. And what is Daniel predicting through these genealogies? He's predicting the rise of a global system of control. And it, it rises up out of these long genealogies, J.R., yes. I think we're seeing it today. Daniel was looking for the Antichrist. Yes. And remember Genesis 3.15, God said to Eve and to the serpent, the seed of the woman will bruise the seed of the serpent's head. The seed of the serpent will bruise his heel, but he will bruise the serpent's head. Yes. And so there is a seed of the woman, which is Christ, and there is a seed of the serpent, a genealogical record of the one world leader, the Antichrist, right. one of these days. Now, we are not saying that Barack Obama is the Antichrist. Don't misunderstand right. me now. I'm just saying that genealogies are important. The rabbis have been looking for a Messiah. They have. And they say that the Messiah's mother will be from the tribe of Dan, and the Messiah's father will be from the tribe of Judah. And they look at Samson of the Old Testament, whose mother was of the tribe of Judah and whose father was from the tribe of Dan. And so they say uh, he was similar but exact opposite. The yeah. parentage will be switched when the Messiah comes. The Messiah's mother will be from the tribe of Dan. That's what the rabbis have been looking for. It's written in the Talmud centuries ago. We're not making this up. So what about his European roots and George Bush's European roots. That's going to be an interesting study. J.R., let me just quickly add, we are not, and I want to say this for the record, predicting uh, that Barack Obama will rise up and become Antichrist. We're not saying that at all. What we are looking at right now is the development of a global system. A again, as we make this program, the G20, a group of, uh, uh, of economic and political leaders from around the world is trying to come up with a global system of control. We're seeing a huge flip-flop in the way the world economy is run. Mm -hmm. At the very same moment that we have a new uh, administration rising to power in the United States, we're talking about the world system here. We're not naming names and saying this person will be this and that person will be yes. that. Uh, but, J.R., we're in interesting biblical times right now. Very biblical. Uh, Barack Obama, because of his Muslim roots, through his father, who was a Muslim, and uh, through his stepfather, who was also a Muslim, has the heart of the Muslim world. Oh, absolutely. And he has the heart of the Jewish world. Yes. The Jews of America financed, supported him. Let me tell you why. Michelle Obama's cousin, 
is America's, one of America's leading black rabbis. And uh, he and Michelle Obama, his name is Rabbi Capers Fune. He's one of America's most prominent black rabbis. He and Michelle Obama are cousins. Fune's mother, Verdell Robinson Fune, and Michelle Obama's paternal grandfather, Fraser Robertson, Robinson Jr., were brother and sister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we've got this connection. Uh, so Israel doesn't have to worry about Barack Obama. He has their heart. He has the, the Palestinians' heart. And, you know, here's a guy who can take both sides. He's friends with both sides, and he can bring them together. He presented himself, J.R., as a unifier. Uh -huh. And he is presented by others as a man who can unify rather than divide, precisely because of what you mentioned. Uh -huh. And this is why, at this particular time in history, he is so interesting to us as students of the Bible. Uh, because, J.R., the Bible has predicted to all who would read it for centuries that in the last days there would be a global unification, a global power structure, if you will. And we're most interested in watching the way this is unfolding. Yes, and he's going to in inherit the White House at a time when the American dollar is being debunked and a global currency is being developed. In, in, in truth. Now here's another interesting note. Uh, Obama's first appointment went to Rahm Emanuel for White House Chief of Staff. Rahm Israel Emanuel. Mm. That's his name. Wow. He's Jewish. Uh, his paternal uncle Emanuel Arabach was killed in a skirmish with Arabs in Jerusalem. Emmanuel's father, Benjamin M. Emmanuel, was born in Jerusalem and was a former member of the Jewish militia Ergun, which operated from 1931 through 1948 during the British Mandate of Palestine. And his, his leader was Menachem Begin, wow. head of the Ergun movement. So uh, he's, he's uh, head of the White House staff, Gary. <laughs> this is interesting. There, yes. we, he's, he surrounded himself with with uh, Jewish influence here, and he himself from Muslim background, and he has adopted Christianity as his religion, and uh, so he's going to be the great unifier. It's fascinating to see what could happen. Well, Jair, we live at a time when Russia is supplying arms in massive quantities to Syria, to Iran, we live in a time when Israel is under daily fire by rocket barrages from Hamas. We live in a time when the global economy is shaking and nobody has an answer. And when you insert this great unknown quantity, this new quantity, Barack Obama and his staff into the equation, mm -hmm. uh, it's probably the most exciting thing we've ever seen in our lifetime. Yeah, and the fact that he's kin to the present president makes him most important. Listen to just some of uh, George Bush's re relatives. Um, George Bush is related to all 60 royal families of Europe. All 60 royal families. So said the Washington Times in July 1988. Bush is a fourth cousin 15 times removed from King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella who sent Co Christopher Columbus, you know, to find this new world. Mm. Isn't it amazing that one of their relatives is president yeah, of this is. new world that Christopher Columbus discovered. And uh, according to author Gary Boyd Roberts in his book, Ancestors of the American Presidents, uh, published in 1989, page 294, Bush's relationship with Ferdinand and Isabella makes him an ancestor of all the later kings of Spain, of all the Holy Roman and Austrian emperors, that is the Habsburg dynasty, beginning with Charles V and all the kings of France and all the kings of Great Britain, uh, beginning with Louis the Thirteenth of France and Charles the Second of Great Britain, uh, respectively, and he's kin to all the Prussian and all the German emperors and all the Russian czars, beginning with Alexander the First. We've got a royal president sitting up there in Washington D.C. Yes, we have. And J.R., <laughs> as you're speaking, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking. One of those four free books that J.R. offered just a minute ago is called Guardians of the Grail. Subscribe yes. to uh, uh, the magazine, you'll get that free book. And the Guardians of the Grail documents uh, the dynasties of the European kings to, and, and, 
and ties them to what the Bible says about the rise of the global system and the Antichrist in the last days. That's why we're so excited about what's going on right now. Yes. George Bush is also related to several U.S. presidents, George Washington, Millard Fillmore, Franklin Pierce, Abraham Lincoln, Ulysses S. Grant, Rutherford B. Hayes, James Garfield, Grover Cleveland, Theodore Roosevelt, William Howard Taft, Calvin Coolidge, Herbert Hoover, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Richard Nixon, and Gerald Ford. Yep, that's right. <laughs> He's kin to all those presidents. Wow. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. Now, as we go on, and you might say, well, uh, what difference does all this make? Uh, as far as, uh, J.R., as far as we're concerned, maybe none at all. But, you know, the Lord has a way of looking at things. As I read the Bible, He ties long-term, long-scale events together. Mm -hmm. He sees things that are a thousand years apart as though it was ten minutes. Yes. And we have these long genealogies, like in Daniel chapter 11, that cover the centuries, but in the end, they have meanings because people rise up to leadership based upon God's selection of their ancestors yes. generations ago. It is a proven fact that all the royalty of Europe came from Merovi, the f Fran f uh, king of the Franks mm -hmm. in the fifth century. And that's the Merovingian connection. Do you remember um, uh, the idea that Jesus and Mary Magdalene bore sacred children yeah. and they and they eventually uh, produced Merovi, who became the father of all the royalty of Europe. In other words, they go back to the tribe of Judah uh, through Jesus. And so they have uh, the title King of Jerusalem. They're allowed to rule the world mm -hmm. and set up the Messianic kingdom uh, according to them. However, Merovi claimed to be from the Trojans. And the Trojans, of course, hail back to the Danite connection. So here we have the tribe of Dan. The rabbis are looking for a Messiah whose mother's from the tribe of Dan. And, J.R., the man we mentioned just a few moments ago, Alexander the Great. He has connections to the tribe of Dan. And uh, if Daniel chapter 11 is a genealogy that links mm -hmm. Alexander to the kings of the latter days. It's just beautiful, a beautiful, clear picture. Yeah. So Arrhenius, one of the great theologians of the second century, A.D. 180, wrote, quote, Jeremiah does not merely point out the Antichrist's sudden coming, but he even indicates the tribe from which he will come when he says we will hear the voice of his swift horses from Dan. Mm. And then Arrhenius had a student who grew up to become a great, a great uh, theologian. Hippolytus in AD 200 wrote, quote, he says, Dan is a lion swelt, Deuteronomy 33, 22, and naming the tribe of Dan, he clearly declared the tribe from which the Antichrist is destined to spring. We're talking about John who wrote the book of Revelation had a student named Polycarp who had a student named Arrhenius, who had a student named Hippolytus. And these guys said the Antichrist will come from the tribe of Dan. And I've got to tie it together very quickly. J.R., uh, the Seleucid kings, the offspring of Dan, uh, intermarried with the Roman Caesars, the Flavian dynasty in the days of the destruction of the temple. And that brought together the, the great prophecy of Daniel. It said, the people of the prince who shall come shall destroy the city and sanctuary. That coming prince is a Danite, but he's also descended out of the Caesars, and he's called the Antichrist. Yeah. So we have been looking at Obama's roots through his mother, tracing him back to our current sitting president and to all the royalty of Europe and to the tribe of Dan. The rabbis are looking for a Messiah. Who knows what's going to be coming? And when the rabbis look for a Messiah, us Christians are thinking, well, how about Jesus? Let's, let's nominate Jesus here for a <laughs> Messiah. But the rabbis say, no, no, we're looking for a future Messiah. And so perhaps on our next program, we'll get into Obama's African family lineage and, uh, and the Bedouin tribes of northern mm -hmm. Galilee. Most interesting. However you look at it, J.R., we're seeing the rise, the prophesied rise of the global system of the latter days. Yes. You better get your heart straightened with God because Jesus is coming to snatch us out one of these days very soon. I'm J.R. Church, 
And I'm speaking for Gary Stearman. Until next time, keep looking up.